Hello everyone, I'm Silent Death, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Space Engineers, episode 24. Today we're going to be looking at some quality of life scripts. Little things to help make our life easier and improve its quality. Convenient things. And we're going to be doing that over here around our command chair. We have these three sections that we set up last episode. And we're going to be splitting them up into three areas. We're going to have refining, assembling, and then power on the final screen. <clears throat> so our first step is going to be getting our chair set up so that it faces the correct direction based on what we want to do. And while we could use timers to do this, we're going to be using a programmable block to do this. So first, let's go down here. And find our first available program on the block. That would be uh, this one here. And we'll just name this. Chair Turner. We'll edit this. There's a script called Twinkies Rotors Controller. That's what we have here. Now this is a pretty simple and straightforward script. Each rotor you have here will get what ang whatever angle you pass as the argument. Let's see where's the main? Right here, the string angle. So it will parse that angle and set the upper limit and the lower limit to that angle with the desired velocity. Now, one thing we want to do that's a little bit different from this script. This script works well enough in most cases. But we want to make things a little bit more fancy. Let's go back up here. A little bit laggy. What we want to happen is we want the velocity not to be constant. We want it to speed up based on how far the chair has to turn so that as we get closer to our destination it kind of slows down. A little bit of a dampening effect is what we're going for. So what we're going to do is modify that script a little bit and change things up so that they work how we want to. It's just a little bit of a personal touch, a little bit of a cool factor we're going for. We could use the script like it is if we were feeling lazy, but I'm not feeling lazy right now. So we're going to change that. First, I'm going to rotate this rotor here so that zero degrees is pointing forward right here. Just to make things a little bit easier, I think. I guess we could leave it like this, and that would be 90, 180, and a 270, and that would make everything easier in math-wise, so I guess maybe we will leave it like that. First, we're going to come down here. Well, not first. We've already gone through first. I don't know what we're on now. Third, maybe? We'll come down here. We're going to want to set up a timer. This rotor script, the Twinkies rotor script, is designed to run once when you pass an argument through it. It is not designed to loop. This is not something that you would want to run with the timer. However, we're doing things differently, so we are going to want the timer, and I think our first available timer is going to be over here somewhere. Okay, you're not doing anything. 
What about you? You're not doing anything either, so you will work. Launch script. We'll put the uh, chair timer here. And then we're just going to say a run with the default argument. We don't need to put any timer. We don't need to have the timer called itself because of how we're going to set this up. We will name this timer dash. Chair turner. I'm going to drop the delay uh, down uh, that way. And we'll just leave this. Go ahead and copy and paste the name. Because we'll need that. And I'm going to edit this script a little bit. And I will be right back in a moment. Okay, I've changed the script up a little bit. We have. We are, we uh, set the rotor name to the name of the rotor. I've changed the name of the rotor to chair rotor. We set up the timer block like we've already done. And then the timer name, the name of the timer block, which we set just a moment ago. We have constants, the minimum and maximum velocity of the rotor in RPM. We initialize the blocks. And right here is where we scale the velocity. We just uh, scale the velocity. How far we need to turn. Divided by this cushion number. Which is how many ticks it's going to take us to turn this far. It also controls how fast the program runs. And then we convert that to RPM and make sure it's between the minimum velocity and the maximum velocity. Down here, we're just getting the angle from the argument that we pass. We're finding the current angle by reading the detailed info of the rotor. Seeing how far we have to go, Getting our velocity from that fine scaled velocity thing. Then we're seeing if we're close. It's at maximum velocity, you can only get within three degrees per tick. So I set this with an error of a four degrees. Then we need to get the sign of the velocity, so our desired velocity, which we got from our velocity function. And this just says whether it's negative or positive. And we have a different calculation if our angle, we're setting it to zero. Because that changes the way it turns a little bit. It's not perfect, but it works. Then we set the upper limit and the lower limit as we did before. We set the velocity and we trigger our tyro block unless we've already reached this part the spot that we need to be right here we do not trigger the timer block down here is where we get the angle from the detailed info so rotor dot detailed info then there's just we split it based on the colon and we look for the beginning of the string and the little degree symbol down here is just a bunch of variables like our velocity tick cushion. So it's set at half a second right now. Then a conversion factor from RPM to degrees, etc, etc. Not a whole lot down here. It's a pretty simple little program. We're currently facing forward. So if we go one, we turn this way. Then two is facing forward. And a three, this is the part where having a zero is a little bit funky. I should maybe turn the rotor around and work a little bit better. But this is the third thing. And we can kind of switch ourselves around even while we're turning.
There we go. Okay. So, what we're going to move on to now is a setting up these areas. So, this area is going to be our ore and refinery area. Which means we need to build some more refineries now that we finally have enough resources to do so. If we go over here into our refinery igloo. We still only have these little three refineries. And we're also using the efficiency modules. And the power modules for the iron. We're going to change this and fill up this igloo with as many refineries as we can pack in. And we're going to use four efficiency modules on all the refineries just to make things a little bit simpler for us. We'll also take the assemblers from here and come in here and set up our assembler igloo while we're at it. And I think we'll probably do speed on most of the assemblers. We might still do a little bit of power efficiency. I haven't decided yet. I know I'm going to do speed on the construction components, but other things I may want efficiency. Again, not sure, just depends on what we're going to be building. And I guess I can take the med bay and move it into our big glue. While I'm doing all this, why don't you watch another segment about our space shuttle? Back here in our survival world, I mean our creative world for our space shuttle, we're going to be working on the fuselage section today. I have a few ideas about how I want to do this and I'm not entirely certain of the scale. One idea is having it be like 4x7, the other idea is twice that. I think that's the interior spacing. This is, I think, 9 blocks at its maximum width and 30 blocks long. And this is 40 something blocks long. So the cockpit there is going to be rather large compared to the rest of the ship. But I think it will work well once we get everything done. Now I'm thinking we might have kind of a double section here with some negative space between them. One of the ideas I was having are we could have kind of two things that sort of merge together. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that, but I was thinking we'd have like the extra hydrogen tanks and stuff down here in the bottom and like the walkway and stuff up here. But let's get started building.
And I'm out of disk space again, so we'll have to end this segment here. I'm rather unhappy with the joints between these two areas. Here and down here, they just don't flow together very well. So what I've been doing off camera is learning how to use a blender to try to come up with some different kind of transitional blocks. This is what I've got done so far is something that goes between the one by one slope to the one by two slope. Just straight across like that. And I plan on adding more blocks, but I still haven't got the construction stages of this block done. So that's probably what I'll be working on between episodes. And I may uh, do a little bit with redoing this part between episodes too. Have to wait and see how that goes. But back to our main episode. And now you know what I've spent the past couple of weeks working on. Mostly the blender stuff, really. It's proving a bit more challenging than I had anticipated, especially the construction stages. Those are taking many, many times longer than the blocks themselves. We have, in fact, added our refineries. Kind of looks a little bit intimidating now. We've also added a number of assemblers. With mostly production modules, a few power efficiency ones right up there, but the rest are production. And all of the refineries have efficiency modules. Good number of them now, so we should be able to chew through a whole bunch of ore rather quickly. So let's go see how we're going to set up this to make our life a little bit easier. Let's find the next available block. That'll be you. So we're going to be using a new script that we have not used before. And here it is, Tladen's Inventory Manager. So we'll just remember and exit that. Then we're going to create a timer for that programmable block. Since that's an inventory manager script, we don't want anything too fast. In fact, I want something rather slow. Once a minute should do. We're going to do this. Timers. Hmm, okay, that'll be you. We will run you with the default argument. And now I have to find this block. Maybe. No, that doesn't work either. It's worth a shot. Chair turner. There we are. And we'll just say start you. And then we will go ahead and start you. Oops. I don't know what I pressed there. Apparently the wrong thing. Now we'll go up to our command chair. And since it's already facing the correct way, we'll set this up. I think. Okay, we'll do. We want to set up this LCD to be ingots, I think. We might do ore on this side and ingots on the other side. So we're on that side. Ingots on this side. Get rid of that quotation mark. And then 
I don't know what we're going to put here. Nothing right now. We can span these if we need to. We might want to. It depends on how big the lines are. We might span the ingots between these two. Let's adjust the timer a little bit so that our panels will update. Tim, so we're going to drop this down to five seconds while we're editing it and then I'll change it back to a minute after we get started. Let's trigger that. Hmm, that's not aligned as well as I would like. I think what we'll do is we will span the Orwin across these two. That should work better. And we can do that with the simple span keyword. So span of two by one. I think that's correct. We'll find out here in a moment. Okay, that was not correct. Let's put the ore first. That colon may not need to be there. Span did not work quite how I wanted it to. It just copied things instead of actually stretching them. So I switched to a wide LCD panel here. And now we have our ore. And over here, being that we used a priority command in this LCD, this is actually our quotas. So we can change these numbers to get a minimum of quantity or a minimum percent and it will try to maintain this percent adjusting what it's refining to do that or this minimum quantity if we drop below either one of these. Now then we're going to set this up to manage our refineries. We're currently using the automatic inventory manager thing, automatic inventory toy sorter mod <clears throat> to take care of this but we can change that put Tim or and then since we still want it to ignore stone and ice we set ice priority 2 and then set it to zero. It has to be the same priority as the or if we use a priority command in the or and we need to. Then we do the same thing with stone. And that <clears throat> should make sure that those function properly. Now if we look in the inventory of our refinery, there it is right there, it's already refining something. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this to a few new ones. Something that isn't already refining. And you can see when it ticked through it changed all these kind of automatically formatted the text and everything that lets us know that it's actually working so if we scroll down you can see that one's doing magnesium magnesium and these should not be having stone at all but they're doing it anyway let's see conveyor system is off let me double check to make sure I'm doing this right. We had to remove the priority commands from the ice and the stone because they were automatically removed from the ore for some reason. I guess that's just how this script works. And as you can see, it split our magnesium up between all of our refineries. And it's currently uh, churning away on that. Satisfying our little quota and all that stuff. 
So that is how we set up the ingot and ore smelting, the refinery part. We'll come back to power later, maybe not in this episode. And let's go ahead. I guess we are going to put components here. I'm going to use this component summary. And I think I'll stick with this ore summary because I kind of like it better than or that ingot summary because I like it better than this one. This one is a priority thing, a quota thing. So what we can do here is set up another quota thing. In this case, we're going to be using components. And that tells us the priorities that we have. Now then, we need to set up our assemblers to work properly with this. Now there's a couple different ways we could do this. I'm going to do it the way that is most convenient for how I want to do things. So first we want to get the name of just one component. We'll use bulletproof glass here. I'm just copy and pasting because certain things like the hydrogen injector are a little bit complicated to find out the correct name. Then we want to go to an assembler. So make sure, okay, so 13 is our master assembler. We don't want to rename that. Assembler 4 here. We're going to uncheck cooperative mode. We're going to turn it off. Then we give it the tag. Prefix it with Tim. And what we're going to be producing here. Make sure that is all. Go back to production. So, bulletproof glass, Tim, will give you a hundred. And it just clicked on. We forgot to set on the repeat mode. And being that I have so very, very many cooperative assemblers, this will be producing rather quickly. Bulletproof glass right there, we're up to 2.2K. And I guess we're just going to be watching that to see how many we have. Now then, we need to do that for each and every component. So that's going to take me a moment. All right, I've went through and have renamed all the assemblers. I've also changed the quotas a little bit. I set all the minimum percent quotas to 0%. And I'm just using fixed numbers. I don't want percent for this base since we're going to be moving to space eventually. I also set the stone to 0% so that none of it gets refined. And you can see here we've been producing a few things like girders, construction components, things that we need a lot of. Over here we have the power which I don't think we're going to be using a script to do anything with. The batteries seem to be working okay right now with the reactors we have from our docked ships. It seems that we're pretty much okay even with all the refineries that we've added and assemblers that we've added. We seem to be doing okay. I don't think we need to do anything. There is one thing I wanted to mention in relation to the power. Come down here. So there's our inventory manager script. And here, we're using a resource example script. Electrics, electricity gas resource example. Recently, they added the ability to do things like retrieve this information from blocks which you couldn't do before with in-game programming. As of yet I've not seen anyone use particularly this part 
the electricity values to create a sort of battery manager script. I'm hoping that we'll see that sometime in the near future. But that's why we're not using any kind of script right now. But that's going to be it for this episode. It's probably going to be another week or two before the next episode while I work on creating those blocks in Blender. Hopefully I'll figure out a better way to do construction components. I may just release it without having any construction stages. And then come back and do the construction stages later if I have time. I don't want to spend too much longer on it. I've already wasted a whole bunch of time. But that is our little quality of life scripts. Like if you like. Subscribe if you're not. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. I do read all the comments. Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.